as the sun sets on day two of EPT Barcelona. The elimination count is rising. In a field this large, there's no respect for reputation. Now, it's a matter of nerves. As battle continues, with one eye on the money, and one eye on the first main event title of EPT 10. to the last few levels of day two of the Pokestars.com EPT main event in the beautiful city of Barcelona. <sighs> last time, the original EPT winner Alexander Stevic became bosom buddies with Italian ex-footballer Alessandro Montecciolo. I want the number 10. This way, people can call me Maradona of poker. <laughs> Another footballer graced the halls, Barcelona FC superstar Gerard Piquet. He fought hard but busted, joining a number of big names on the rail. It's James Hartigan with Joe Stapleton, and halfway through the day, we're bringing a new cast of characters to our feature table. Well, I wouldn't exactly call them new. There's at least three familiar faces at the table, and watch for low-hanging sleeves because they are all wizards. Kevin McPhee is an EPT champ, while Phil Grusom and Igor Kurganov are both members of the German High Roller Squad. Merlin, Gandalf, Harry Potter. No, 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 David Van Plu's out. With many a deep run and a win in Berlin, this EPT regular knows what has to be done. My strategy today, play snug and just try to play against the, the weaker players. He's probably not talking about these two. Rebuy regulars in the super high rollers, Grusom and Kurganov are still looking for that elusive EPT main event final table. As is Victor Ramdin, after coming close in Monaco last season. I need these big scores that I had in the past. So I'm going for broke. I'm going back to the old Victor. Everyone who survives this session will come back for day three when we play down to the money. The prize pool in this tournament, nearly six million euros. There's the first ever EPT winner. Now we have events that cost more than that to buy in. Hello, Olivia. Kevin McPhee posting a picture of his unlucky table draw. Phil Gruesome and Igor Kurganov. Not an auspicious start to the day for Kevin. Maybe he's at least got position on them? He's sandwiched. Grusom and Kurganov both playing 80K. McPhee a tamp below the tournament average with 63,000. We're playing nine-handed at our feature table with 494 players remaining overall. Blind 600-1200 with a 200 ante. Kurganov, jack nine suited under the gun plus three. It's 2013, y'all. This is a raising hand. And there is the raise. He makes it 2,600. The guy with the safety belt is Sergei Chanchev. <laughs> he folds. Konstantin Shulga has king-queen offsuit. Give me some Shulga, baby. Oof, I am not crazy about this. I was talking about the ceviche lunch, but yeah, a three bet here too. Not crazy about it. A re-raise from the cutoff to 7,100. In general, you want a three bet for value with your strong hands or three bet bluff with weak hands. I think this is a perfectly good hand to just call with. The button and the blinds have all folded. King Queen is a hand Sugar should not really be calling a four bet with. Igor is capable, and this isn't a hand he's going to call with out of position very often. Kurganov brings back his original bet and re raises a four bet to 16,600. Come, my lady. Come, come, my lady. You're my butterfly, Sugar, baby. Shulga forced to fold the best hand. Whoops. A good start to the session for Igor Kurganov, adding more than 10,000 chips to his stack. Well, let's head over to our secondary feature table, playing host to another member of the High Roller Club, Ola Shemian, involved in a hand against Edouard Bagu. Looks like we're about to see some more bluffage. 
Shemi and bets 7,600. 7,600. Bagu with jacks, the best hand, calls. Super quick, super stringy call by Bagu. An ace on the river, Shemi and now with top pair. Shemi needs to call his mom and let her know he's safe because he just got there. Here comes a thin value bet. Having bluffed the turn, Shemian can now bet for value. 9,500. I think this is a fine play to make against a player who's either going to call you or fold to you, but doing it against a player who's going to occasionally bluff raise you is no bueno. Bagu faults. And apparently, he's not going to bluff raise you. I have a good reason on the river, I think. Hmm? You always have a good read on the river. <laughs> Not a bad read on the river yourself, Edward Bagu. He mainly plays tournaments back in Holland, recently won a 1K event in Breda. Out in the field, the original champion is involved in a three-way pot. Actions on Dalmatian Lover Antonio Alfire. He checks. Who let the dogs out? Tomasz Sibulski. Bets the turn, 3,800. Here comes your boy, Stevich. It's a race. 12,000. Alfire folds. And Sobolski folds as well. Stevich, Sobuli, Sobolski. Nice. Well, from the first ever EPT winner to the reigning Barcelona champ, the guy who won more than a million euros 12 months ago. Nikolai Pobal. Hey, remember when he got a penalty for not raising the nuts? Classic. Kent Lundmark! This man has left the indelible mark of Lund on the EPT with his win here in Barcelona. My all-time favorite EPT champion, Kent Lundmark. And Lundmark is currently among the chip leaders. Two members of Team Pro on the leaderboard, Villa Valbeck and Christophe de Mulder. Albert de Haer is still the biggest stack in the room with more than 300,000, 188 big blinds. There is De Haer, rocking the big headphones. Second in chips right now is online qualifier Ryan Spittles. What kind of name is that? Spittles. Sounds like what your mouth might do after eating too much rainbow candy. Out in the field, we find Team Pro on Team Pro action. Theo Jorgensen versus Victor Ramden. Jorgensen bet the flop. Ramden's raised. It's rare for somebody to fast play a flop, so what Victor does is it's probably going to look like some kind of ruse. Jorgensen re-raises to three bet to 18,500. And Ramden re-raises a four bet to 26,500. Looks like Victor has gone back to the old Victor. Unfortunately, the old Victor could punt like nobody's business. What is that, 10, 20, 165? With their table positions, no one's really supposed to have any of this. 25, 26, five, like that. Jorgensen calls. 65,000 in the middle. The turn card is the seven of hearts. Jorgensen checks. Yeah, nobody's got anything. Ramden checks behind. The river, the ten of hearts. Jorgensen quickly bets 36,500. Ramden wow. quickly calls. Theo's got king high. Ramden river to straight wow they were both full of beans i like the bet by theo on the river just unlucky victor had a hand he could snap call with if you can explain what was going on on the flop take your tweets ept that is some more old victor for you getting there in a weird way other members of team pro still alive christoph de Mulder among the top 10 chip stacks in the room as is villa valbeck and playing an average stack right now ept6 san remo winner livbury well, let's head back to the main feature table where we have another EPT6 winner, Kevin McPhee. He's folded, so action is on Marcus Panake on the button. He's a local boy who's never played a tournament outside Spain. Cool. With Ace Deuce, he raises to 2,900. Cool that he's local, not that he's never played a tournament outside Spain. Jacek Markowski folds the small blind. Jack 10 for Phil Gruesome in the big blind. Easy defend. Will cost him an additional 1700. Never fall. Never fall. Big blind. Yeah. It's too cheap, man. Too cheap. Yeah. Phil Gruesome, bargain hunter. He flops an open ended straight draw. Check. 
He checks the preflop aggressor, who still has the best hand with ace high. There's a seabed of 3,100. They're coming to play, no? I think he's talking to you. I wanted to do a pie chart based on the percentage of the time Phil would fold here, but it's just a circle. Gruesome calls. And I'd say there's a pretty good shot Panicay just gives it up now. Six of hearts on the turn. Check. Gruesome checks a second time. And no double barrel from Panicay. He checks behind. The river card, the eight of hearts. I check. Gruesome checks again. I think Phil probably could have bet the river. Do want the three? Yeah, that's possible. Check. Panicay checks. Showdown. No three. Panicay is probably not playing his value hands that way, so Phil maybe could have got some better hands to fold with a bet on the river. As it stands, ace high is best, and Panicay is thrilled. The Spanish player gets his stack up to 156,000. Ah, I thought no need to bluff. <laughs> there was a time. need to bluff. I'm calling. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely calling Phil. Right now to see what he's doing for dinner later. Hold on. Two rings and voicemail. That's not good. Blinds up. 800, 1600 with a 200 ante. Action on Sergei Chanchev. He faults. Shulga's out. Timothy Kuznetsov. He passes. Kevin McPhee has aces. Hello. He raises from under the gun plus three. It's now 3,200 to go. Action folded around to the small blind. Jonas Hagstrom. Pocket jacks. I don't think things are going to turn out too well for James Corden over here. Hagstrom starts the hand with just over 32,000. Come on. He shoves. Uh-oh. Kurganov folds the big. Paul. McPhee calls. Hagstrom, a huge underdog. Not even a flush draw. This sucks. Yes, what he said. There are still two jacks left in the deck. And he's going to need to hit both of them. Yeah, bro. I pulled up and dragged for the win. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, if that's true, he's drawing dead to a chop. 6-6. Six, six. Easy to call for your opponent's chop outs when the odds of it happening are 0.11%. He's drawing dead. Nice playing with you, Jonas. Hey, you too, guys. For what it's worth, I was a big Gavin and Stacy fan. And Kevin McPhee on course for another deep run in an EPT main event. So this is the magic fountain of Manjuk. It's got music and lights. It's just like the fountain at Bellagio. But it's not, though, is it? It's a fountain on a roundabout near the casino, and there is nothing magical about it. That's not what it says according to this quarter behind your ear. The Sagrada Familia draws a big crowd, but inside the Casino Barcelona, the Pokestars.com EPT main event draws an even bigger crowd as day two continues. And plenty of the players in this room are online qualifiers. Talking of which, Joe, we need to select a new qualifier. Flame on. And once again, we're sticking our necks out and taking a huge risk and selecting the guy who's currently second in ships, Ryan Spittles. Oh. I heard that James Hartigan picked me as a qualifier of the day, which is uh, really good to hear. It's good, good to know that he's got faith and confidence in my ability, and uh, hopefully I can go on win some big pots. Ryan, consider yourself jinxed. He's just three bet Benoit Guri. Our online qualifiers so far have a 0% win rate. Guri has just four bet to nearly 21,000, and Ryan Spittles quickly folds. Great job picking Ryan, by the way, James. You know, the guy already second in chips. How's the limb you're out on? Is it firm? Looks firm. 
And the jinxing's working as well. I'm the one who's on fire today. All right, buddy. Back at the main feature table, we are going to sweat with Igor Kurganov. Let's get into the mind of Kurgs. He's on the button. He's even called anymore, basically, right? Anymore. He's called anymore. It's like anymore. Animal! Pocket Kings. 33. With the action folded to him, Kurganov raises to 3,300. Well, this is the hand we all want. Kings on the button and Igor Kurganov's rep. Better fasten that safety belt, Chanchev. Yeah, bro. Take the bag off. Stay a while. He calls from the small blind. Konstantin Shulga in the big blind. Sugar pie honey bunch. He calls as well. Three way to the flop. Obviously, the more players in the hand, the more the value of kings goes down, but we don't mind taking it three ways. Jack 8 7 rainbow. Action on Shanchev. Huh. And he don't lead to 5,000. I think most folks are doing this with some hands they don't mind getting called with, some they don't mind getting folds with either. Something like a pair or a pair and a straight draw. Shulga sticking around. And when he calls, it could be a very wide range. Obviously, I don't think we've got any choice but to overcall in this spot, but when we do, I think we reveal our hand as at least a pretty decent pair. Kurganov does call. I'd say it looks like something like 9-8 would be the bottom of our range. Still three-way to the turn, which is the eight of hearts pairing the board. Chanchev does not bet again. He checks. And it looks like Shulga wants to take the betting lead now. Yeah, and I don't really like the look of this. 12,000. 12, this bet has got my Stapesy Sense registered trademark tingling. I think he's going to have an eight here, a decent amount. And the worst he's usually going to have is a turn flush draw. But our hand is too good and our odds are too good to fold now. A call here is what I like to call a no stapeser. Also registered trademark. Kurganov does call. Chanchev. We actually want Chanchev to fold here. If he doesn't, I'd say we're way more likely to be in big, big trouble. He does fold. He folded Queen Jack, so we actually flopped top pair. Wow, that's good. And we definitely don't want to see another straight card out here on the river. Well, the river looks pretty innocuous. The three of clubs. Will Shulga bet again? We're hoping no. He checks. Even though I was a little worried on the turn, I think when Shulga checks the river, we're going to be good a lot. Totally fine with a value bet. Kurganov plays it cautiously. He checks behind. Shulga. Tables 9-7. He flopped. Bottom pair and a straight draw. Looked like a medium to a good jack to me. Thought we could maybe get paid on the river. But with bottom pair, maybe not. Still, I think our hand is almost always good there. In the words of Joe Hashem, pass the sugar. Well, Kurganov has only cashed for 46,000 euros in EPT main events, but his high roller earnings total more than 3 million. He won the high roller in Monaco back in season eight. When that happened, I remember thinking of him as the random guy who beat Daniel. Now he bosses high rollers like Bill Lumberg. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and ask you not win all of the money. Back out into the field. Alexander Stevich heads up against Joseph Bacar. 9,500 apiece on the turn. The river card, a queen. Some flop draws came in, but they came in on the turn, not the river. Action on Captain Bacar, engage. He bets 18,000. Stevich, quiet today. I wonder if it's because winning this thing a second time might actually seem like something possible. He folds. Ship the chips to Bacar. Or maybe it's because he has less chips than he had halfway through the day yesterday. Stevich slightly below average right now. Albert de Haar significantly above average, as is Joe Stapleton's favorite player of all time, Kent Lundmark. Kent Lundmark. You know, I'm still not really sure why he's not the center of our feature table. Anyone? Lundmark currently seventh on the leaderboard, just ahead of our qualifier, Ryan Spittles. 
Albert de Heer is now number two. The new tournament chip leader is Yertel Hansen. 385 remain. Over to the secondary table. Olashemian heads up against Jakob Rasmussen. Both these guys have won events at the now defunct Partouche Poker Tour. Check, check on the turn. Queen on the river. I like Rasmussen's line so far. Shemian with just six high. And he bets. He blasts 5,200, but Rasmussen, who paired his nine on the turn, quickly calls and tables the winning hand. Well played. Check medium strength hands, induce bluffs, bank wire, ATM, rub $50 on your nipples. Bling, blang, blau. Rasmussen moves up the leaderboard. He's now in the top 10. Shemian moves down, playing 167K. Well, out in the field, it's Jorgensen v. Ramden, round two. Action on the river. Lots of stuff got there by this river. Jorgensen checks. Victor bets 12,500. And Theo's wrestling with the fact that Victor probably got there again. He folds. It's the ace king. Show one. Show one if it's not the ace king. Show one if it's not the ace king. This one. This one. Wow, that's a crucial hand. If I squeeze free flop, you're all in, yeah? I play that flop so badly, oh my god. I'd be sick if I lost that hand. Really? <laughs> hit it that big, yeah? Wow. Ah, uh, lucky. I played so poorly and got lucky. Story probably checks out. Poor Theo, I think Victor's done that to him a few times now. Look at him. Victor Ramden's had a fair few caches on the EPT and recently came close to making the greatest final table of all time in Monaco. Put it down to an adjustment in his playing style. The old school Victor is what I want to be. I lost that touch in my game. This is where I need to play to win this tournament. A, B, C doesn't work anymore. After 10 years of playing poker, I hate to say, but I'm actually experimenting again of what I used to do when I did well, that got me big money. Yeah. But I play the flop very bad, very poorly. I'm supposed to get it in on the flop. Play bad, get there. Sounds like a strategy that literally cannot lose. Is he still talking about that hand? Back to the feature table, action on Igor Kurganov. 6-4 suited. A raise here will be a little loose, but nothing egregious. Word of the day, toilet paper. He does raise from mid-position. Makes it 3,400. Action. Folded around to Kevin McPhee in the small blind. Who's got ace, queen of diamonds. Love a smooth call here. And if those $5 sunglasses are telling me anything, it's that this guy doesn't spend any more money than he has to. McPhee does call. Panake folds the big blind. We're going heads up to the flop. And that flop is all McPhee, queen deuce deuce. He's got to be Mac loving this. Checks to the razor. He knows Igor is going to be betting this very often, and he's almost always going to be ahead. There's the continuation bet from Igor, 5,100. And then Kevin's going to get smooth again. He calls. We go to the turn with 20,400 in the pot. Just gets better for Kevin. Now has a flush draw to go with top pair. Kurganov now drawing dead. Action's been checked to him a second time. And I wouldn't expect him to bet this very often, given that when he's called, he's going to have exactly zero equity. 12,200. Or maybe he thinks Kevin's calling a lot with weak ace highs that he thinks he can get to fold here. Kevin McPhee calls again. That should tell him something. Seven of spades on the river. Don't see any reason why Kevin wouldn't keep the same line. He checks a third time. Triple barrel bluff, Mr. Kurganov? Igor's last chance to take an absolutely futile stab at this. River bluffing is futile, foolish human. He checks behind. McPhee shows the winning hand. Kurganov mucks. Igor did a good job to check back, but I think in general, when people are bluffing the turn there, they should do it with hands like Jack-8 or King-10, where there's at least some good card they can hit on the river. Ship the pizzle to McFizzle. Kevin now has a stack of more than 111,000 chips. 
Oh, he dropped one. Wide left, wide left. It's through the uprights and it's good. One, two, three. I wish, I wish for the, the best, best co-host co -host ever. ever. I can't tell if it came true or not. Did for one of us. Welcome back to a busy day two of the Pokestars.com EPT Barcelona main event. As we rejoin the action, we have a new lineup at our secondary feature table, headlined by EPT champ Liv Bury. Come with me if you want to live, Bury. She's called the pre flop three bet of 2013 UK IPT Grand Final champion Nicolau Villalobos. Liv getting a little speculative. Yep, hit the bathroom, learned a new word during the ad break. Liv's flop pretty well. Happy to call the continuation bet. Super strong draw. Like the just call, you keep your range wide, make it easier to get paid if you get there. Well, she doesn't get there on the turn. Villalobos slows down, though. He checks. And Liv should really bet here. If you get check raised, yes, you have to fold, but the times you win the pot here are going to outnumber the times you check back and hit your hand. And if your opponent calls, you have the chance to get there in an even bigger pot. Liv bets 18,000. Villalobos raises, enough to put Liv all in. Totes unnecessary, IMO. He's pretty much drawing dead to any better hand. He probably wouldn't bluff like this, so all the worst hands are gonna fold. Well, she did fold. Villalobos wins the pot, and Liv is down to 41,500. Meanwhile, her fellow team pro, Theo Jorgensen, is all in and all out. Good luck. Well, at least he's already dressed for bed. What is up with those pants? Elias Hernandez, the beneficiary of Theo's chips. And if there's two things Scandi guys like to do, it's stick together and shop at the same satchel store. Lines are up, 1,000, 2,000 with a 300 ante. Back at the main feature table, once again, we will play a hand from Igor Kurganov's point of view. More sweating with Kurgles. I love it. I am right now tearing my shirt into a deep V. There's been an early position raised from Timothy Kuznetsov. Why did I do that? I like this shirt. Kirkin off with tens in the big blind. Yeah, we're calling. Sure enough, throws in the additional 2,600. The flop, 973, all undercards to Kirkinov's tens. Pretty neato flop for two tens. He checks the aggressor. We're playing in flow. I like it. I like it. Kuznetsov continues. 5,200. This is an absolute slam dunk call for us. There's the call. The turn card. The king of spades. Ugh. Kurganov checks a second time. Kuznetsov looks back at his hand. You know what I hate most about our hand? We don't have a spade. So let's say we're behind. One of our outs now puts a four card flush out there. Me no likey. Because Netsov bets again, 12,500. We also still kind of have to call here because I think Kuznetsov also keeps firing with the ace or the queen of spades here. Once again, Kurganov calls. The river is the deuce of diamonds. Well, it's not a spade at least. Kurganov checks a third time. Kuznetsov is going to bet a third time by the looks of things. Gross. I was hoping to not face a bet here. 26,000. This is a spot that's right on the line. It comes down a lot to player tendencies. If it's someone who's pretty live, this is a call. If not, I think it's a fold. It's all about Igor's read. Personally, I don't think the T-800 here is bluffing all that often. My vote? Fold. Kurganov's read is that tens could be good. He calls. Kuznetsov doesn't look happy about it, but he should have been. Ace King, tens were not good. Sov greater than Nov. Kuznetsov wins a six figure pot. And Kurganov takes a hit down to 44,200. Well, let's head to the outer tables where the original champion is in action once again, facing an all in from Halka Hesiding 
who was the runner-up in Lutraki in season eight. Stevich calls. Queens against sevens. No help for Hesiting on the flop or on the turn. He needs a seven. Doesn't hit. He's out. Good luck, everyone. You know, temporally, Alexander Stevich is technically the guy who's most due to be the first two-time EPT winner. He gets to stack Hauka Hesiting's chips. It's Hauka and not Haiku? Guess I don't need this poem, then. And to think, it's almost a decade since Stevich got into the record books out of the gate. Well, it feels very good to be back in Barcelona 10 years after the first win. I won the first one, believing the whole way that I would win the first one. My big turning point in the tournament was from the second hour of first day. I lost a lot of chips in the beginning. I had just a little bit of chips left. And then I started to win and I got a bigger stack and I folded two kings pre-flop. And it was a bit weird. And I wanted to see the other guy's cards and he said no. And I said please and he said no. And I asked the dealer what happens if I turn up his cards because I put my hand on his cards when he was trying to mark them and the dealer said you will get the penalty and I said I am hungry and I want to eat and I take the penalty boom he had two aces and I said to the guy I owe you a dinner I'm sorry and I got my half hour penalty but that was the turning point that was the time when I really realized that oh, this is my tournament That first Barcelona tournament was so long ago, we only have Polaroids of it. Well, there's another guy who's seeking his second Barcelona title. Ketlon, Mark! You know him constantly stacking chips is probably why he hasn't been answering my text. Come on, Ket, let's go to Red Lobster! He's still among the chip leaders. He's 10th overall. It's all changed at the top. De Gea now third, Hansen in second. A new tournament boss, Christopher Andler from Sweden. 332 players remain from the 1,234 who began. James, time to check in with your online qualifiers. Spittles against Antonio Luft. Ryan bets the flop. 5,200 and gets a fold. My god, I can see why you picked him. He's amazing. And his stack is almost double the tournament average. 221,000. Not quite double, though, is it? Which is why I use the word almost. Listen, Joseph, listen. Back at the main feature table. Actions on Jacek Markovsky. He folds from under the gun. Phil Gruesome, queen five of diamonds. Now this would be egregiously loose. Nice. He raises to 4,500. Kurganov. Not gonna play this one. Sergei Chanchev has king four suited. Come on. He folds. Shulgas out. Because Netsov on the button. Wall pass. Kevin McPhee in the small blind. Ace seven suited. He re raises a three bet to 15K. Completely undeterred by Phil's early raise. Wow. Has a cup of tea ever looked more menacing than in the hands of Phil Gruesome? I don't see Gruesome ever calling there. He folds and drinks menacingly. Nothing else you can do when McPhee bosses you that bad. Kevin McPhee has 11 caches on the European Poker Tour, including two final table appearances, including one win. I only got into the EPT on season five. I fell in love with the European Poker Tour. I made a promise to myself to try to qualify for every single tournament. My dream is to be the first two-time EPT champion. I think I have a pretty good shot. You know, I also had a dream that Kevin McPhee won two EPTs. Only he was naked. I was naked. You know what? I don't want to talk about this anymore. Good. The chip lead's changed once again. It's now Neil Farrell who's the biggest stack in the room. Over at the secondary feature table, Liv Barry finds herself in a pot against Manuel Kubaros. Kubaros probably should have three bet this before the flop if he was going to play Ace Trey. It doesn't play so hot and heads up hot and can get you into some weird situations like the time I drunk dialed Liv. Google it. Liv is going to see bet 3,100. Even if you think Liv's going to be continuing with her entire range here, Ace Trey isn't going to be ahead all that often. 
Kubaros's biggest result to date was a 383rd place finish in the World Series of Poker main event a few years ago. I know that doesn't sound particularly impressive, but that tournament has thousands of players. Well, Kubaros has called. The turn card is the six of clubs pairing the board. Liv now with a flush draw to go with her gut shot. She checks. I thought Kubaros was peeling the flop, hoping Liv would shut down, but it looks like it was a float. Now he's going to try to steal it. He bet 6,800. This is the kind of weird spot Ace 3 can get you into. And Liv Marie moves all in. Come, please. It's 34,000. Love Liv's line here. It's the perfect hand to be semi bluffing with. It's like qualifying for an EPT. So many ways to get there. And even if Kubaros thinks she's bluffing, she could easily be bluffing with a better ace high. Hey, sometimes it's hard to get away from a monster like ace three. Me thinks he will find the fold eventually. Although ironically, in this particular situation, he's actually a 59% favorite. Me. He passes. Nice one. More like live boss re. Really? Yeah, I haven't done that one yet. There's a reason. <laughs> They're all bosses. Liv now playing 64,700, roughly half the tournament average. Back at the main feature table, blinds are up to 1,200, 2,400 with a 300 ante. Phil Gruesome, raised from the cuss off with Queens, got called on the button by Kristen El Sandu. And the flop is King 10 6. Top pair for Sandu. Is Sandu an old guy who looks young or a young guy who looks old? I can't tell. Krusum continues for 5,000, leaving himself 22,000 behind. Not a mandatory spot for Phil to continue, but there are some worse hands that could call. Sandu raises to 15K. More like Sand don't. <sighs> There's no hand King Queen's ahead of that's going to feel good about getting it in here. Phil would have very likely barreled the turn, and now he's probably folding. No, he moves all in. Well, this has made me look foolish now, hasn't it? Sandu has to call. It's only an additional 12,000. And it's the year of Romania. And Phil Gruesome is drawing to one out. Yeah, it's not looking good, Phil. I'm not going to lie to you. Back doors? Well, that's a back door. Gruesome can now chop it with a nine or an ace on the river. A queen for the outright win. But he's probably right to be packing up. Yeah, it's an eight on the river. Phil Gruesome eliminated. All right. Good luck, guys. Can't believe he paid off Sandu. Tough to get away from Queens, I guess. All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Gosh, he's a nice boy. I'm sorry to see him go. Igor Kurganov left to fly the flag for the high rollers. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. You remember that scene at the end of Ocean's Eleven where they all meet up at the fountain and then each slowly fade away? Yeah. It's just like us, buddy. Except it's daytime, there's no music, and we haven't stolen anything. Only the hearts of our audience. Only the hearts of our audience. Right, James? James? Barcelona, sun, sea, sand, and suck out. As we head into the final level of day two of the Pokestars.com EPT Barcelona main event. While well, Liv Marie would really love a suck out, she's moved all in with Jax. She's been called by Madis Moore, who's got pocket aces. Oh no's Olivia. Four to one underdog with five cards to come. Liv needs to see a hook or she's gonna get the ax. The turn card gives her a straight draw. She can now double up with a jack or a nine on the river. It's a five. Again, guys. Nice one of you. Liv Barry is Busto, which means more chips for more. Nice. Busto, JJ into AAR. Is that how you guys write that? Yep. So we've lost one season six champ, but we've got another 
at our main feature table, Kevin McPhee. Who's got Jax under the gun? Let's hope he doesn't run into aces. He raises to 5,200. Queen three suited. Ugh. Fold it around to Sergei Chanchev on the button. Seven four suited. Like an email saying you've got a rich dead uncle in Uganda, this might look tempting, but no. He folds. Konstantin Shulga in the small blind. Has a seven of clubs. Cool. Sure. Timothy Kuznetsov in the big blind has four deuce offsuit. Ugh. But I guess you can make a call here because pot odds? Or you can squeeze. He re-raises. It's a three bet to 15,000. I don't think Kevin's got to wonder too much about whether or not this is a squeeze. His hand is just too strong to fold. I'm all in. McPhee shoves. He's got both players covered. Insta fold from Shulga and from Kuznetsov. With this stack, Kuznetsov shouldn't have been three bet bluffing, and he certainly can't do it now. Kevin McPhee up over 150,000. 288 remain as we head towards the end of day two. Out in the field, our qualifier, Ryan Spittles, is taking on Victor Randon. 56. Ryan bets 5,600 on the flop. Victor Randon looking to put a little CO2 on the qualifier. Randon calls. Six of hearts on the turn. Ramden checks. Hang on a sec, is that Paul McCartney? <laughs> Him and Ringo are the only ones left in the last longer. Ryan Spittles checks behind. Jack of hearts on the river. Ramden bets 15,000. Ramden has been showing himself to play like a bit of a wild man today. Ryan may look him up pretty light. Ryan recently had some dental work done. He said he was terrified about being drilled in the mouth. He calls the 15K. Ramden shows ace nine. Top pet is good. Ryan looked him up really light. Youch, talk about courage under qualifier. And I'm just hearing that that was not Paul McCartney at the same table as Ryan Spittles and Victor Ramden. He's now up to 164,100. And why did he sign my copy of Sergeant Peppers? Back to the main feature table. Kevin McPhee. Looking down at Ace King. Getting hit in the face with the deck. From late position, from the hijack, he raises to 5,200. Marcos Panake has 5-7 off suit. 57 varieties of uh. Jacek Markovsky folds the button. Noel Gans has just arrived at the table. He folds the small blind. Kristen El Sandu has King Jack in the big blind. Sandu dominated, but there's no real way for him to know that. Yes, that's Nicholas Heinecker, and no Igor Kurganov and Tobias Reinkemeyer did not have a kid, to my knowledge. Sandu calls. Thanks for putting that image in my head. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. The flop is ace, 10, nine with two clubs. Good flop for Sandu in that it's gonna be hard for him to lose a lot of chips on this hand. He's either gonna hit his card or get off relatively easy. He checks his gut shot. And Kevin McPhee with top pair will continue. 6,800. Six. Pardon. This guy doesn't even care about the extra 800. We got a badass over here. I love this guy's optimism. Well, he doesn't hit his gut shot, but he does pair his jack. And he can't be too crazy about it. Kind of like someone you only want to hang out with on a Monday night. He checks a second time. McPhee will bet a second time. He barrels for 12,900. Even a lot of the hands Kevin's going to have been just barreling the flop with will have just gotten there on the turn. Folding after you improve feels totally weird, but it's correct in this spot. Wow. I really admire this guy's optimism. <laughs> Seven of spades on the river. A few draws just got there. And if Sandu isn't confident his hand is good, which he shouldn't be, now would be an awesome spot to turn it into a bluff. No, he checks. No check. McPhee checks behind. King Jack, no good. Ace King, very good. 
Look for up to 180,000. He is rolling right along. I'm calling it right now. Two-time champion. This event, I'll put money on it. How much? Uh, you know what? Let me think about that for a second. Let's head out into the field where Ivan Demidov has just been eliminated. No. And staying on the outer tables, we're going to check in on Alex Stevic. Heads up against the Cypriot Timothy Dalton, Andreas Christoforou. If Alexander Stevich won this event in 2004, why does he look like he's from the 80s? Stevich bets the turn, 16,500. Christoforou folds, showing an ace. Stevic shows a king. Ooh, the king. What's that make? Let's head back to the main feature table for the last hand of the day. I hope it's a good one, like that last hand from Casino Royale. Action has been folded around to Jacek Markovsky. I'm looking forward to Markovsky's lecture later on Immanuel Kant. Of all the philosophers you could have riffed on, you chose that one. <laughs> it was not on purpose. Pocket threes in the cutoff, and he raises to five and a half thousand. Queen Jack for Sandu. I think a lot of the time this should be a three bet out of the small blind. It's a little too weak to play out of position without the betting lead. I'm gonna be honest, that cap is starting to give me a headache. He calls. Igor Kurganov has pocket tens in the big blind. Kurganov and Markovsky definitely shop at the same college professor clothing store, right? Kurganov moves all in for just over 23,000. Igor has just let us know when his office hours are. It may look like a cheeky little squeeze, but I think threes are a fold here, especially with someone to act behind. Markovsky four bets. Sandu folds. So Kurganov is at risk, but he's a big favorite here. There can only be one deep V cardigan combo at this table, and it looks like Markovsky's about to lose his faculty parking space. Kurganov just has to fade a three on the turn and river. Tens, now a 95% favorite. And with a six on the river, Igor Kurganov will double up on the last hand of the night. Pretty loose call by threes, but hey, all the coolest professors occasionally stray from the syllabus. So Igor Kurganov is among 235 players to have survived day two of the EPT Barcelona main event. Let's see who else is coming back for day three. Your online qualifier, he'll flame on into day three. Obviously Kevin McPhee's in there. Kent Lundmark, don't even bother writing your name, bro. We know yours is the one with all the chips. Stevich hanging in there, he'll be back. As will last year's winner, Mikolai Pabal. Couple of cool stories still in there, bro. Including the guy who's got more chips than anyone else, Pablo Tavitian from Argentina. 465,000. So Tavitian will come into day three as chip leader ahead of British pro Neil Farrell. Kent Lundmark, one of our former Barcelona champions, is still a top 10 stack. And among the members of Team Pro returning tomorrow is Victor Ramden. This is a typical Victor Ramden day. We're going for broke, but we gotta get the chips. There's no more nitty poker. Uh, you know, you just have to go for it these days. Next time, the strangest money bubble ever. We have three tables in the call. Attention, main event players, we have a very unique situation over here. Why does everything have to be my tournament?